Actually, I blew everything on the heat. Um, and so we decided that we were going to hop off and go onto the Interstate. And we had left our beloved Interstate 90, and we're now on Interstate 29, which was going south. And what's pretty cool as well, because obviously these Interstates count the amount of miles from the border, but this was counting like the opposite way, so it was counting down as we went. So we started on 70 something by the time we hit there and it was counting down to zero to where you hit Iowa. Um, so that was pretty cool. And we went on there and we stopped at, oh, we tried to get off again at Worthington and hit this very little further on where apparently there wasn't any construction going on still, but it was still being constructed. So we basically took a two mile detour out to Worthington and back up to the I-90 just for no reason whatsoever. And we stopped at Ferrisford for a little, um, for a little 30 mile stop or however long we're going for probably a little bit longer like 30 something and um yeah got a i went in to get a donut but then the swipe thing didn't work and then the mat and then i was like oh, okay don't worry i don't have any money so it's like fine and um i went back to get my water and some water and i was on my way out and the woman said oh this guy has picked up your donut for you and i was like oh, oh that's really sweet and so that was touching and um i was really happy with my donut and a little sugar rush and we hit the road again and it was really the interstate was glorious it was like where yesterday was like cycling through treacle and rocky road it was like today was just really nice like the wind was all over the place that wasn't great um but what was nice was the the road surface was all concrete and all just really straightforward just churned out the miles so easy like if flying flying through to be honest probably a similar pace to yesterday but it it was just a lot easier um and unfortunately, James' knee started hurting again, though, mm-hmm. which always, no day is without, without ice trials. But even with that hurting, we still went at quite a decent pace. So, um, yeah, it kind of speaks wonders of the, of the surface and how much that impacts, um, impacts the ride. And so we carried on going until, where did we stop next? The cable. Oh, the <coughs> That is so annoying. Anyway, we stopped at a really irrelevant place, um, which didn't even have a bench to sit on. And so we came off the interstate and um, round this, like one of one of them things that goes round like that, and, <laughs> and stopped off and refilled some water. Um, went to the like pretty irrelevant stop just for the sake of it. Really, again another thirty something miles in. So by this point, we'd done about seventy miles and had about eighteen to go. Um, and yeah, hit the interstate again. And road kill of the day today, surprisingly, the most road kill that we saw were actually tortoises. There were so many like crushed shells on the road, and we don't know why. It's as soon as we hit, as soon as we left um, Mitchell, is the, that's been like there've been loads of them, and we don't really understand that at all. I don't know if that's got anything to do with the flood. Being that close, yeah, for like which might have brought them that close to the road, um, and made them road kill or easy prey for orcs or whatever it was um, and also a load of deer that's the thing being on the i-90 today we actually hardly saw any wildlife at all um, but the but what we did see was a lot more of the road kill so the wildlife that we would have seen on the highway we did see on the freeway but just dead really which was <laughs> a bit peak um, we saw some raccoons as well as always and we saw some as well, um, some uh, an otter mm-hmm. in that in that thing. And anyway, we ca- yeah, came off the interstate and we decided we'd hit a different, slightly different route, which was twenty three miles till the finish. And um, it took us on this off at oh my gosh, where did we come off? It was that town, Jefferson. Jefferson, yeah, well remembered. And um, which because apparently the cycle route bridge or whatever or over military road was flooded because of the recent flooding and had construction or whatever so it wasn't cyclable so we came off slightly north at Jefferson and actually worked out quite well because they live like north our, our host and right live north of Sioux City in the kind of yeah and so we came um, over and around from the north instead of coming back up through the south and all the way through the city um, and we crossed over Jefferson Bridge uh, uh, over this bridge at Jefferson which was the border with Iowa um, but we had to double check that as well because there was no no signs up whatsoever. That was even worse than crossing into South Dakota. It was like, okay, we're we're here now. We um, and it was a pretty relevant river as well. Don't know the name, but it, it was. Uh, we saw a beaver that we didn't like the beaver that we saw, the dead beaver that we saw earlier, which we thought was a platypus for some reason. 
and um, yeah, and carried on, and um, like the frustrating is frustrating that because um, it was such a such a straightforward ride, and no day with us is without our without trials, and so um, yeah, obviously with James and me, that was pretty tough. The, um, especially because after crossing this bridge, there were a load of flies because it became suddenly like really like loads of foliage, loads of trees, and so there were loads of flies in the area, and they were just like feasting off our sweat. And so we literally had a swarm around each of us. We were like coughing and spluttering up this hill, which we were doing anyway, but all the more so because we were swallowing like half a dozen flies with each breath. And um, <laughs> yeah, so that was really tough. Um, and but other than that, it was a really flat day, about a thousand feet downhill, six fifty uphill. Um, so really straightforward, and we rode in um, on the off the back of the hill, so that was quite nice. Had a bit of momentum, and it was like nothing for ages, like just a load of trees and um, couldn't see the city. And it was and it said there was a mile to go till we turned off to their house. We we're like, well, we must suddenly hit like the city just bam like that, and it must appear out of nowhere. Um, and indeed they did, and literally out nearly around the corner, and it was just like suburbs after the suburbs, loads and loads of the typical like bungalow houses that you get here, um, and yeah, and so we came pretty straightforward. Um, half a mile after that, we arrived at the house and met Alex, who's our host tonight, and he um, obviously from warm showers. And he's lovely, isn't he? Very nice. Yeah, very. And he's got a really lovely house. Again, we're set up in the basement, so like really nice and cool. And they've got a really cool setup down here. Um, and as you can see, the map behind us, with lots of pins of all the places that he's been. And um, yeah, shower changed, and then we went off to get burritos at La Juanita, which is a which is a Mexican place in here in Sioux City, which is apparently in the top five, according to Esquire magazine, is in the top five places to get Mexican food in the whole of burritos in the whole of America and the top one outside of California to get burritos at and it was amazing like we got two burritos each two tacos each got that steak on board um, refueled oh, it was so good and Alex was saying it was the most he did see ever seen anyone eat at that place and we, we devoured it I got like could have eaten a lot more as well because it was delicious um, and there was a picture as well on the wall of a time that Obama had visited mm. and apparently Obama was just excited to visit as um, the restaurant was to host him because he heard so much about the place um, and they have loads of literally every every corner they have a Mexican um, restaurant so it was quite a big thing over here apparently um, and then we went to Walmart and obviously stopped up a classic loaf of bread I got like 24 more bars and 16 more pop tarts because I need that extra kick to get me to Chicago, which is in five days' time, by the way. Really poofing up on us. Um, and yeah, we chatted with Alex as well, who's really cool. He's a bar manager, so he taught us. So he's got a lot of experience in the wine sort of area, which is quite cool to hear about. And as well, he's got this awesome cigar room up top uh, at the top of his house, um, which is like really classy. I now want one in <laughs> my next house because I think that's just the best. Because uh, apparently they chill up there in winter where it's all nice and warm. And it sounds like quite a cool hangout area, um, and he's got his is it girlfriend or wife? Do you know? girlfriend? Girlfriend Taylor, um, and they have a daughter. Um, neither of whom we met yet, but um, Taylor's at work coming back uh, soon, so we're going to meet meet her soon, which is um, cool. And we've yeah, and now we're just chilling. We're gonna watch. Uh, hopefully, just chill out and watch some movies as well because um, we got that Wi-Fi. I'm so gutted to be missing out on Love Island. I need someone to like give me like a step-by-step -step feedback of what's going on this season because I've been seeing some stuff about seeing like some, some YouTube clips pop up but even then I can't watch some of the YouTube clips because apparently they're only available in England which I didn't know was a thing on YouTube. Um, but yeah, and also a couple of things that we forgot to mention before were oh, what were they? One thing was smoke. We've had a lot of smoke coming through like um, the past few rural states because apparently it's like blown down from fires from Canada and I didn't really get why there were fires in Canada. Wildfires. Why they are just wildfires, yeah. Um, and yeah, so we've had like a lot of that to deal with as well coming down. And there's one more thing which I can't remember now. That is so frustrating. Oh, I definitely had something on the tip of my tongue. Um, 
but yeah, we wrestled through that. It was a free booking. Yeah, feeling good apart from winning. But yeah, that's the strange thing because you did like you didn't look like you're putting in a lot of. It wasn't like like a physical like stamina thing. It's just no. it's the meat, which is yeah, um, <coughs> like yeah. But we've got the, we've got a rest day coming for soon, which we're looking forward to, and hopefully as well we'll be able to hop into Nebraska on our way to Carroll, which is our next stop tomorrow. Carroll's about 110 miles tomorrow um, away. And so that would be our seventh state going, like just hopping into Nebraska, which would be quite cool. Because he actually works in Nebraska. Sioux City is on the like three borders. Um, so I think you said that last night. I think I said that last night. But yeah, anyway, he work, like, works in Nebraska, plays in Iowa, like hops over to South Dakota all the time, which I think is really cool. Um, yeah. Is there anything else missing? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> There's definitely more stuff to mention, but I can't remember which is so nice. Also, do you like our setup? Comment if you'd prefer us lying down and talking to the camera. Not that anyone comments. <laughs> or sitting up like this, which is a bit of a throwback to Seattle, where our legs looked huge and I dangled my toe in front of the camera a lot um, back on day zero. And yeah, plenty more GoPro footage to come because I finally worked out how to do that.